Yo, what is up guys? Welcome back to another MLB The Show 21 video where today we are going to be rebuilding the Minnesota Twins. They have a pretty good team already. Their starting rotation is pretty good. You got Maeda, you got Barrios, J.A. Happ, he's good right now, but he's going to fall off because he's 38 years old. Uh, let me just go back to where I was. I signed this prospect in the free agent market. Maybe he can make an impact this year and next year if I need starting pitching help. Michael Pineda, who could be pretty good. He has a lot of good attributes, especially his break on his pitches. Doesn't look like he gives up a lot of walks either, so he might be a good part of the rotation. I still think we're going to have to add another arm because uh, some of the pitches are old or um, just we don't have a lot of depth. So I might add some of them. Going over to the lineup... We have Angelton Simmons, Luis Arias, Nelson Cruz, who has a good hitting stats, but he's 40 years old, so I know he's going to fall off, so we might have to upgrade him uh, during the season or after, or even trade him. Josh Donaldson, Miguel Sano, Max Kepler, Jake Cave, Jorge Polanco, and Mitch Garver. Byron Buxton, don't know why he's on the bench. Ryan Jeffers, Kyle Garlick, Alex Kirloff. So, Twins got a good team. Definitely some places that we want to upgrade. I'm going to go to the draft. Hopefully, we can get a really good player there. If not, we're going to go to the trade deadline and try to upgrade the team there. So, looking at our draft picks from this year, we didn't actually get anyone too good. I mean, we got some people who have some potential and will make it to the majors eventually. But we didn't really get anyone that's too special. No 90s. We got an 86 third baseman who has some contact. Um, good attributes so and a lot of speed so he might do something eventually but he's 64 overall so he's a couple years away from the majors other than that nothing really too big looking at a team we're 27 and 29 so we're a little bit below 500 but we're gonna get there so we just got offered a deal that I think I'm going to take Andrew Heaney who has been playing pretty solid this season even though he's in a little bit of a slump right now comes a he becomes a free agent after this year they're offering him for Nelson Cruz who's been playing really well in the lineup but my biggest fear is that Cruz is going to fall off towards the end of the year and he won't be able to keep these numbers up so I think I'm going to go ahead and trade Cruz I'm going to allow Kirloff to get a larger opportunity at the major league level so let's just see how it goes we're going to trade Cruz to the Angels and then add Heaney to the rotation and I think that's going to be good we had to go with a four-man rotation for a little bit um Barrios have been pitching really well um, Maeda has been struggling a lot as you can see um so we're gonna go with that rotation and let's see where we go by the deadline so we're at the trade deadline right now a couple of players that I'm going to target first off is Clint Frazier we need a little bit of an upgrade in left field right now and Frazier hasn't been producing too much only eight home runs 27 RBIs and a 230 batting average his OPS and his slugging isn't really that good either for the player that he's supposed to be so we might be able to get him for fairly cheap let's see what we can get for him um so this is a prospect they want a lot of prospects for him i don't really think i want to do that uh, i don't want to give up donaldson either so we might not be able to get him i'm going to see if anything else works its way out trying to upgrade our shortstop position because simmons has been playing pretty well with the bat um almost a 300 average he has a 280 right now but i just wanted to add more power into the lineup since we got rid of Cruz. so i'm going to explore some options and see what deals we can get done so the first deal that we ha have completed is acquiring jordan hicks from the cardinals i think this is an absolute steal we got him for a prospect of c potential hicks has a potential and has been pitching pretty well this year he can definitely be the next andrew miller or roldis chapman of the bullpen 100 miles an hour fastball nasty slider i'm going to go ahead and make this deal i think that's a great deal for us and i'm going to see what else we can do i want to add some pitching and i also want to add another bat to the lineup so let's just see what else becomes available so another deal that became available is michael brantley for some prospects i don't really want to trade away a lot of prospects but these prospects are a while away from making it to the mlb and we need some help now so i think michael brantley is going to be a perfect player we can put him in the leadoff spot or we could put him in the four slot uh, he doesn't have a lot of power obviously not the same power that cruz has but he drives in a lot of runs which is something our team needs especially in the playoff push so we're definitely going to go ahead and add him now the last piece i just want to add is a starting pitcher uh, there's a couple one i think i'm going to target pablo lopez i've gotten him in a couple other rebuilds i don't really want to take anything off of the major league roster which is why i'm trying to put prospects into the deal um so i think i'm just going to do another prospects deal Again, these players are a ways away from the majors, so I'm going to go ahead and make that deal. So our rotation looks a lot better now. And Michael Pineda, who's been pitching pretty well for us, I think we're going to keep him for a depth 
option i wanted to trade him just to dump the 10 million dollars that we owe him and then we can spend that money in free agency but i think we're just going to stick with him right now um we have a really good pitching staff column has been struggling a bit but it doesn't matter because we got hicks and everyone else has been playing pretty good uh so i think we're definitely in a good spot right now simmons i might trade but he only has one year left so i might just let him go in free agency and find another shortstop then so i think we're going to be good to go from now on i'll see you guys at the end of the year one last deal that became available is Michael Pineda for Carlos Rondon. When I was about to simulate, I got offered this deal, which I'm going to take because Rondon has been pitching pretty much the same as Pineda. He adds another lefty to the rotation. Right now, we only have Heaney in the rotation, so it might be good to get another lefty in there. And he also makes $7 million less than Pineda, so we could shed some salary room as well. So I'm definitely going to take this deal, and that's our last deal of the deadline. Let's go ahead and skip to the end of the season. A little bit of bad news, we made it to the playoffs, sort of. We had to play a tie-breaking game to the Angels, which we lost. We put Barrios out on the mound because he was the best pitcher on our team, but he gave up four runs and we lost the game. But we had a really good season. Uh, the awards, we won a gold glove of Buxton and we won the Rookie of the Year, so I'm not too sad about that. I think our team played really well. We're going to go ahead and look at everyone's stats on the team in the lineup. Simmons played pretty well. Again, you're not going to get a lot of power out of him. He's more there for his defense, and he gets on base a lot with his contact skills. Orias had over 300 average, so he was basically like Simmons, except got on base more. Polanco in the three spot had almost 20 homers with a 300 average, so he actually played a lot better than I thought. Sano almost had 30 home runs. Kepler had 20 home runs, or almost he had 19. Cave had 14. He struggled a bit. Buxton struggled a lot this year. Uh, he didn't really have the power going for him, and his contact was low. The reason why Donaldson's not in this lineup, he actually had a season-ending injury, so we didn't have Donaldson from the trade deadline to the end of the year. Maybe that played a factor. Mitch Garver barely played this year as well. Garver, um, I think he was done for about four months, so he was done from the deadline on, so we had to use Jeffers as our backup catcher. Michael Brantley had 11 home runs, 40 RBIs, and 300 average. So he played pretty well. He got on base a lot. Uh, he did get injured in the final stretch of the year, so we didn't really get to use him that much either. And then everyone else played pretty well in the rotation. Maeda did not have a good year. He lost more games than he won. His ERA went down towards the end of the year, so he started to heat up towards the end, but he just really didn't pitch like the ace that we needed him to. Heaney pitched pretty well. Uh, worse than Maeda, though. Uh, Rondon pitched pretty well. The same as Pineda, so we didn't really lose anything. And Lopez was probably the most steady arm in the rotation the bullpen on the other hand was really good everyone had good eras so that was a good sign now we're going to go to the offseason and upgrade some pieces so we're in the free agency market a place i definitely want to upgrade is the starting rotation because maeda wasn't really that good i want to add another ace or just someone who can be really solid in the rotation i didn't think winkler was a starter in this game turns out he is in the last game he was reliever so um, let's just see Kluber definitely someone to look out for I think I could add him but he is older he is 35 he could fall off so it's a little bit risky Syndergaard I would love to add but again he he pitched similar to Maeda he struggled a bit um, and he does want a lot of money unless we get him on a one-year deal uh, I think I'm gonna go ahead and offer him a one-year deal hopefully he accepts that and he can help us in the playoff run uh, as far as closures go, we have a pretty solid bullpen already, so I'm not really too worried about this. I think our bullpen's going to be good to go. We just need Garver to be healthy in the catching position. I wouldn't mind adding Buster Posey for a backup catcher who can also play first base. I'm going to offer him a deal um, just you know, to play some first base now and then and um, be a solid catcher defensively uh, if Garver's injured. So I think that's going to be a good deal. First base, we have Sano, don't worry about that. Our second base is pretty much under control. Solano might be able to be a good leadoff hitter, but I don't really want to spend the 5.4 million. Uh, third base, we don't have to worry. Shortstop, so we let Simmons walk. I want to add a good shortstop defensively. Um, sort of like Simmons, but a little bit better offensively. Seager is definitely the best offensive shortstop on this market, but his defense isn't the same as Simmons. I'm thinking about a Baez or a Correa. Let's see what Correa is asking for. 31 million a year, that's expensive. And Baez is only asking for 19.1. So I definitely think I'm gonna go after Baez instead. I wanted to go after Trevor Story, but he signed an extension with the Rockies, which I didn't think he would do. I'm gonna make it a player-friendly deal just so Baez 
comes uh, to Minnesota, there's a higher chance of him coming if I make it more player friendly. And I can put it back loaded so the uh, budget isn't impacted as much. So I think that's going to be a good deal if he accepts it. And then everyone else in the outfield, we have a pretty solid outfield right now with Kirloff, Buxton, and Brantley. So not too worried about the outfield. Now we just got to see if these players will accept. So one day later, the Twins have signed Javier Baez to a five-year, $100 million deal. Baez, the same basically defensively as Simmons, so we're going to get the same defensive skills from him, uh, except Baez hits for more power and drives in more runs. So we can put Baez in the middle of the lineup and have Brantley leading off. So I think this is definitely an upgrade over Simmons. So that's very good to see. Next day, Red Sox get hand. Uh, I'm just trying to see if we got Syndergaard. So the Twins, we have just signed Noah Syndergaard to a one-year $15 million deal um, just to pitch behind Maeda, you know, add a second ace to the team. I'm extremely excited for this deal. I think our rotation is extremely good now. Maeda, Syndergaard, Heaney, Lopez, and Rondon. Great rotation now. And then our bench, we're going to have Baez. And then over here. At the start of the next season, we made some moves in the offseason. So our lineup is looking a lot better. We have Luis Arias, Jorge Polanco, Michael Brantley in the three spot. So a lot of contact hitters in our first three. Then we have Miguel Sano and Javier Baez to drive in those runs in the fourth and fifth spot. We also added Edwin Rios in the offseason because he has some massive power. He can also play some first base at left field and right field. We have Max Kepler, Byron Buxton, and Buster Posey as well at the catching spot. So we are looking extremely good to start the season. We also have Mitch Garver. Um, so I think I'm going to start him over Posey. Posey's the backup catcher. So our team's looking really good. Donaldson, I'm going to try to get in the lineup as much as possible. Um, but Rios just hammers uh, righty. So I'm going to keep him in that slot for now. And then move Donaldson in and out of the lineup. So I think our lineup's looking really good. Our rotation, we have Maeda, Syndergaard, Bureos. Lopez and Heaney, so our bullpen is looking A+. Plus. We also have Rondon in case anyone gets injured, Smeltzer in case anyone gets injured or just out of a long man role in the bullpen, Randy Dobnak who can also start, Jordan Hicks, Tyler Duffy, Alex Colome, and Taylor Rogers. So our team's looking really good. I'm going to go ahead and send to the trade deadline and see what's happening there. So we're at the draft right now and we got a really good third baseman. Unfortunately, he's not going to be in the MLB for like six years. Um, but that's okay because he's 18 years old and he has all the potential in the world um, So that's a very good pick. We also got a decent starting pitcher another closer and a center fielder who have some major league potential So that's just a draft update. Let's go to the trade deadline So we are currently at the trade deadline right now and our team has been playing extremely well Luis Arias has 11 homers and a 306 average out of the leadoff spot. So he's playing really good Polanco has been getting on base a lot. Second slot, um, Brantley has been sort of producing in the three hole. I wish he had a little bit more RBIs, but he has been doing pretty good. So Noah has 25 homers and almost a 275 batting average. So he's been doing extremely well in the cleanup spot. Javier Baez has been struggling offensively. As you can see, his average is down in the 230s, but he has 15 homers. Uh, obviously, his strikeouts are up. They're always going to be up for some reason. He just strikes out a lot. But his defense has been pretty good this year. He's only made two errors, or he's made 14 errors. Sorry, I read the wrong thing. Uh, so, Bias has not been playing good at all. He has a negative war, so he has been worse for the team than better. 14 errors and a bad batting average. First year of his big contract we gave him isn't looking that good. Um, Edwin Rios, 15 homers for a platoon guy that's really good. Kepler, 13 homers, his average is down. Byron Buxton, yeah, one, uh, 82 games, 177 batting average, 5 homers. Uh, he has 5 caught stealing, 7 stolen bases. His strikeouts are up. His on base percentage isn't high. His slugging's not high. His OPS is in the 500s. He's only made one error, so that's why he's still out there, but it's not been looking too good. Jake Cave hasn't been playing any better either, so that's why we're using Buxton. Maybe we'll trade Buxton at the deadline and go after someone. Josh Donaldson, he's starting to fall off, as you can see by his attributes, but he just hasn't been playing that good. We've only got him in 24 games this year. He hasn't hit a homer, and his average and everything else is down. He's playing a lot like Buxton. He's eating up $23 million, so we're probably going to go ahead and trade him. Buster Posey, again, he's older. This is what we expected from him, 250 average. We know his home run, he only has one home run, but he's more there just to fill in when Garver isn't there. 
Um, he hasn't made an error yet this season, so that's really good. And Kirloff hasn't been getting a lot of play time. Going over to the rotation, our rotation has been looking really good. Maeda is having a bounce back year, almost a 2.8 ERA with 10 wins and 6 losses. So he's doing what we just wanted him to do. Noah Syndergaard has been probably the best pitcher on the staff, even though his win to losses are almost the same. Uh, he hasn't been getting a lot of run support. As you can see, his ERA is down in the twos. So Syndergaard's been pitching really good. That was a really good signing. Breos has a good win and loss record. His ERA is in the threes, pitching really well. Lopez has been pitching really well. And Heaney has more losses than wins, but his ERA is good. Oh, not, oh that's Rondon. Sorry, that, that's Rondon who I was talking about. Our team just hasn't been scoring a lot of runs when Rondon or Syndergaard are on the mound. In the bullpen, we have Andrew Heaney has been pitching good. He started some games for us. Smelt has been really good out of the long man role. Dobnak's been really good. Hicks has been really good. This guy's been really good. I don't want to botch his last name. Duffy's been really good. colomay has been not very good, but he's only pitched five innings for some reason. And Rogers has been really good. So our team's looking really good. On the trade block, I want to upgrade a few positions. Um... Definitely someone I want to try to go after is Jose Ramirez. Just to put him in the middle of this lineup, uh, we can definitely upgrade third base and move Rios over to a bench roll. Um, and we can go ahead and try to trade Donaldson for Ramirez. Let's just see if we can do it. I'm probably going to have to add a good prospect. Ozuna is a really high prospect. He might even come up next year, so I don't really want to trade him. Um, this guy could definitely be part of that deal because we have a stacked right field lineup as far as prospects go. And then center fielders, I mean, I could throw Buxton in there just because I might go after someone else. Um, but I could just throw this prospect in instead. So boom, we have Jose Ramirez now. I think that was a really good trade. Um, I want to add a center fielder. Obviously, I see George Springer right here. We could go after him considering he's having a pretty decent year. And we just got rid of the $23 million that Donaldson was owed. So I'm definitely going to go after Springer. I'm already going to take this deal because those prospects weren't going to have the highest chance of making the majors anytime soon. So now we just have to adjust our lineup. I also forgot to mention that we traded Byron Buxton to the Marlins for two A prospects. That's just really to get Buxton off the team because he wasn't performing well. So now we just have to update our lineup. So this is what our new lineup looks like. Arias, Polanco, Brantley, Ramirez, Springer, Sano, Bias, Kepler, and Garver. I think this lineup looks dangerous. We're going to go ahead to the end of the season and see how everything plays out. So for some reason, we won 100 games and we're the wildcard team. Chicago must have done really well. So we're going to manage this game. Let's skip to the ninth and see if we are in a good spot. So we're in the ninth inning right now. Our team is up 10 to 1. So we're just going to go ahead and take that wild card win. Polanco with a homer and three RBIs. We have to take on Chicago. Now, I am actually curious to see how good Chicago did. Oh, they had one more win than us. So they didn't beat us by that much. Going over to the award just to see where everyone landed. Kentai Maeda, one year after having a bad year, he wins the Cy Young. That's good to see. And we win the MVP as well with Ramirez. So I knew that trade was going to pay off a 307 average with almost 40 homers and 101 RBIs. George Springer was right behind him in votes. Uh, he had a big season as well. So those two trades paid off extremely well for me. And obviously Maeda pitched really well. We did end up losing Barrios to a season-ending injury, so he is not with us right now. But luckily, we had Andrew Heaney. He was able to step in and have some good starts for us. So going over to the league leaders, Noah Syndergaard led in strikeouts, ERA, Maeda and wins, Syndergaard in innings pitched, and Syndergaard in war. I don't know how Syndergaard didn't win the Cy Young then. Um, Arias in hits, Ramirez in slugging percentage. So we had a really good team this year. Let's see against Chicago. Loss. Loss. Win, Heaney, win. Okay, now I'm going to simulate this one as well. See you guys in the ninth inning. I simulated one inning and Syndergaard gave up eight runs and we ended up losing the first round. Unlucky. I'm gonna... That was very unlucky how we were unable to beat Chicago in the first round of the playoffs. That was very unfortunate, but we did end up beating our goal. Uh, we had one of the best teams, I feel like, with Ramirez and Springer and Maeda and Syndergaard. If only Syndergaard didn't give up those eight runs in that one inning, our team would probably 
still be playing, but unfortunate we didn't end up um, moving on, but we did beat our goal of the video, which was to make the playoffs. Um, so I think we did that very well. Let me know in the comments what team you want to see next. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more content. I'll see you guys.